NASA is saying the Voyager 2 probe is now in a space between the stars. And finally, NASA on Tuesday said that it has found a heartbeat signal from the Voyager 2 probe. It started with a whisper across the vast darkness of space, an electronic pulse traveling at the speed of light, emitted by a machine older than most of today's technology, still coursing with life beyond the edge of our solar system. Voyager 2, the interstellar spacecraft launched by NASA in 1977, had just sent what would turn out to be its final intelligible signal. For decades, it had served as an emissary to the unknown, transmitting data from the farthest reaches of the solar system and beyond. Its last message didn't come with drama or theatrics, just a stream of raw information, cold, scientific, and yet more foreboding than any headline could capture. The signal confirmed what many had feared for years. Something in the deep void was not only out there, it was watching. Before we start, smash the like and subscribe buttons for more updates. The final data package was small, almost an afterthought by cosmic standards, but hidden within the usual readings, temperature, magnetic fields, particle density, was a distinct irregular fluctuation. Something anomalous, yet clearly artificial, had interfered with Voyager 2's instruments. At first, scientists believed it to be a malfunction. After all, Voyager 2 had traveled over 12 billion miles from Earth. Glitches were not only expected, they were routine. But this wasn't a glitch. The signal bore a pattern, unmistakable and deliberate. It wasn't random static or corrupted code. It had structure, rhythm, an intentional frequency shift that couldn't be chalked up to cosmic radiation or hardware decay. The implications were immediate and chilling. This was not a failure of Voyager 2's systems. It was a response. The signal had come from the direction opposite Voyager's trajectory. That meant something was behind it, following it. And somehow, it had altered the probe's outgoing transmission before the signal reached Earth. The notion sent a ripple of unease through the scientific community. No known natural phenomena could have caused such a targeted modification. For years, Voyager 2 had traveled through the interstellar medium, a region believed to be sparse, empty, and silent. But now it seemed that emptiness wasn't quite as empty as we had assumed. Something had intercepted humanity's oldest explorer and left its fingerprints on its dying breath. Voyager 2 had long been a symbol of human curiosity, a mechanical scout pushing beyond the final frontier. It carried with it the golden record, a copper disc etched with images, sounds, and greetings from Earth. It was a time capsule meant for any intelligent life it might encounter, a friendly gesture cast into the dark. But the signal that returned suggested that maybe friendliness wasn't what we should have offered. Maybe, just maybe, we had knocked on a door that should have remained closed. For decades, Voyager 2's mission had been celebrated for its triumphs. It had passed by Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, sending back groundbreaking images and data that redefined our understanding of the outer planets. Then it drifted further still into interstellar space, becoming only the second man-made object to do so. But the further it went, the less predictable its environment became. This last transmission painted a picture not of a lonely spacecraft fading into the night, but of a sentinel that had finally drawn attention. What was particularly disturbing was the precision of the interference. The altered data wasn't random noise. It was consistent with patterns found in digital encryption, something that suggested intelligence, not coincidence. Analysis revealed modulated signals with symmetrical intervals, nested loops and mirrored sequences. It was as if Voyager 2 had become a vessel for a new message, not one from Earth, but one crafted somewhere far beyond. The reality of such an intrusion was staggering. If something had the capability to detect, analyze, and override Voyager's signal in real time, it meant it was not only advanced, it was aware. This awareness is what transformed scientific intrigue into existential dread. Humanity had long theorized about extraterrestrial life. We pointed radio telescopes at the stars, hoping to catch a whisper from civilizations unknown. Yet all this time, our own emissary had slipped quietly into the dark, offering up our existence with a polished golden greeting card. Now that card had been read, and the reader had responded. There's an unsettling finality to a one-way conversation. Voyager 2 wasn't built to defend itself. It wasn't designed to monitor threats or evade detection. 
It was a relic of optimism, a spacecraft made in an era when we believed that what lay beyond the stars was wonder, not danger. That belief now stood challenged. The last message wasn't just data, it was a warning that the silence of space may not be benign, but simply patient. Many feared that the signal meant something more than communication. The precision of the modulation hinted at a level of technology well beyond anything Earth had developed. The ability to manipulate electromagnetic signals at that distance, with that clarity, required an understanding of physics that bordered on the incomprehensible. And if that intelligence was mobile, capable of tracking or even following Voyager, then we had just signaled not only our location but also our technological inferiority. And it didn't end with the signal. In the days that followed, deep space monitoring arrays reported faint echoes in the same frequency band. Signals that weren't coming from Voyager, but from somewhere else entirely. Each echo was weaker than the last, like someone whispering from behind a locked door, unsure whether to open it. These signals were unlike any natural background noise. They bore no resemblance to quasars, pulsars, or gamma bursts. They were controlled, directed, and eerily consistent. The kind of consistency that can only come from design. As Voyager 2 faded into permanent silence, the unease didn't fade with it. If anything, it grew. The probe had served as our farthest reaching eye, and now that eye had closed. But what it saw in its final moment remained etched in the signal it sent. It wasn't a visual record. It wasn't a photograph. It was more abstract, more intimate. A signal tampered with by something outside our sphere of understanding. Something that had been waiting, listening, and now finally, speaking. The scientific community was split. Some clung to the belief that there had to be a more mundane explanation. Perhaps Voyager's aging components had succumbed to radiation damage in a new and unexpected way. Perhaps a rare cosmic event had altered the signal in a way that mimicked artificiality. But deep down, even the skeptics knew the truth had changed. The data was too clean, too deliberate. It had the feel of intent. If that intent was benign, we would have no way of knowing. If it wasn't, we might already be too late. There's an ancient human instinct to fear the unknown. In every myth and legend, there is a boundary, a forest line, a dark cave, a deep ocean trench, beyond which monsters dwell. For centuries, space has been that boundary, and we, standing on the shore of a cosmic ocean, dared to send a message into the deep. Now the deep had spoken back. Voyager 2's journey was supposed to be unending. It would drift through the void long after Earth was gone, a lonely testament to human existence. But that assumption was based on the idea that it would remain undisturbed, that it would pass, unseen and untouched, through a vacuum indifferent to its presence. That idea now lay shattered. Something out there had seen it, touched it, and returned its gaze. Voyager's silence was not just the end of a mission, it was the beginning of a question. What lies beyond the veil? What intelligence exists beyond our grasp, capable of plucking our ancient spacecraft from the ether and weaving its own message into our own? The final signal did not answer these questions. It only made them more urgent. Speculation erupted, not just in labs and observatories, but across the world. The media clamped onto the fear, while researchers raced to decrypt the altered segments of the final transmission. Cryptographers, linguists, and even AI specialists were brought in to decode what might be a message within a message. But if a message was there, it remained locked behind a wall of incomprehensible structure. No known language, cipher, or algorithm revealed its meaning. The more they tried, the more it felt like trying to solve a puzzle designed by something that thought in ways we couldn't even conceptualize. And maybe that was the real message. Not a word or a warning, but a demonstration. A simple act of technological superiority, like flicking a pebble at an ant to see how it reacts. Voyager 2 was the pebble, Earth was the anthill, and whatever was out there, it was still watching. Voyager 2's final signal will be remembered not for what it said, but for what it meant. It marked a threshold crossed, a moment when humanity moved from exploring the universe to being observed by it. The romanticism of space exploration was now tempered by the realization that we are not the only ones capable of looking outward. Something else is looking back, that small ancient spacecraft, cobbled together by engineers in the 1970s, had reached a point no human had ever touched. And in doing so, it may have revealed our presence to a cosmic intelligence that prefers to remain hidden. 
the space between stars may not be as empty as it appears. And now, the silence after Voyager's final breath is louder than any sound. As Earth listens for the next echo, the question hangs heavy. Was Voyager 2's last message a greeting returned, or a door slowly closing? If you liked this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, leave your comments below and tell us. What are your thoughts on Voyager 2's final signal? We want to hear from you. Thank you for watching and see you next time.